What's up, everybody? Justin here with another poorly reviewed beer from Brooklyn Brewery in Brooklyn, New York. This is their insulated dark lager. Uh, this is their winter seasonal, available November to January. And uh, notes from the brewery. Brooklyn insulated dark lager is your protection against biting wind and soggy weather. German Munich, roasted carafa, and Pilsner malts create a nimble, racy body, while a helping of, Amer of American black barley adds just a hint of roast coffee. A light dry hopping of American and German hops pitter-patters across the nose and dives into the dry, warming finish. Enjoy it with dark breads, hearty meats, and sturdy cheddars. If you still feel the chill, just add an another layer and enjoy your insulation. Uh, malts used, as I said, include... German Munich, Carafa, Pilsner, and American Dark Barley. Hops used Summit, Heller Tower, Middlefru, Amarillo, and Centennial. Yeast used is their own house lager yeast, and the ABV is 5.6%. And it's worth knowing, noting, I don't think it's going to be able to be seen on video, but they, they do put a Best Buy, at least month and year on this bottle. BB March 2017 also gives an indication to it. On the label to look for that so uh still inside the drinking period for this beer all that talking let's uh check it out uh a little bit lighter than cola uh on its own uh deep brown color as I hold up the light, it's kind of just uh, maybe a, a burnt orange or just more of the even further watered down cola note, uh, color rather. Maybe a finger's worth of head and that's about what it was. Uh, pretty well see-through, I do believe. Though I think just the sheer darkness of the color makes it hard to be actual, actually be able to see anything. But I think it is clear... If we were able to put a, yeah, kind of looking at the bottom, I can kind of see uh, my finger pretty well on the very bottom. So, uh, generally see through except for the, uh, just the pure darkness of the beer. Let's give it a try. Hmm. Getting a little bit of the coffee on the nose. Hmm. And plenty of it in the, uh, in the flavor as well, really, throughout the entire drinking experience. It, and it's uh, very much the... I don't think... I don't know if dominating is the right word, because it's not, it's not overpowering in any way, but it's it's very much the most prominent uh, flavor note. It's something I'm going to have to get past to be able to identify other things. Uh, roasty malts, just an initial bit of sweetness that goes away relatively quickly in the drinking experience. Mm. Uh, nice and tasty overall. I'm looking at their uh, description where they use the phrase nimble racy body. I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to mean, but it, it seems to me like it's relatively light in body, and maybe that's supposed to mean it's, it's easily drinkable, whereas you kind of think of the, if you have had a Guinness Stout, that you almost, it's super thick, almost to the point of having to, to chew through it, as some people like to jokingly say. Um, very much the opposite here. Uh, relatively light body that makes it... Um, kind of speed down the throat. I think maybe that's kind of what they're going for with nimble racy body gets down the throat quite easily. It's not so thick that it's going to uh, just weigh itself down in your mouth. Some bitterness in the back end. I'm trying to identify it's, if it's, I think it's at least partially a coffee bitterness. I'm trying to see if I can get some, some hot bitterness out of there as well. But almost a, a, a little bit of a cola note 
or with the the overlying coffee note, like an, uh, a sweetened iced coffee, a well-sweetened iced coffee note at the very beginning of the drinking experience. Gives way to some roast that gives way to to a little bit of bitterness. Not not an overwhelming amount and not a, in any way unmanageable or uh, turn offish kind of way like I had the uh, with the beer I had the other day that was a little, little too overpowering on the bitterness. This is not like that and it, quite frankly it feels more like a little more like a uh, a coffee bitterness than a hot bitterness. But um tasty beer. It it is really quite tasty. Uh not boozy at all of course for uh, only 5.6 and it's a it's it's dark, but it's a dark lager, so we're not getting into, at least in this example, we're not talking you know imperial porter, imperial stout, imperial imperial brown ale type of territory. <coughs> so, uh, pretty close to sessionable, nice and tasty if you're liking the the coffee notes. And um, this edition of a uh, Brooklyn Ins- Brooklyn insulated dark lager is uh, quite good, quite good overall. So that is it for this edition of Poorly Reviewed Beer. You can find all my reviews, both video and written, along with news, commentary, and more at poorlyreviewedbeer.com. I would just like to kind of point out an uh, article or commentary piece I wrote yesterday, I published yesterday, uh, about an article I saw on another website talking about Buffalo Wild Wings and being such a, a powerful, having such a powerful craft beer presence and... Um, didn't feel like that was quite right and just feel like I felt like I wanted to make some points about that along with I think what I think is just a very good overarching point in in this day and age in a lot of cities it's not hard to find a good bar with a quality beer list it's not hard to find a bottle shop anymore heck even in uh, Columbia South Carolina that's uh, it's making its strides in terms of having a, a craft beer scene but I still think it's Certainly in terms of breweries, it's it's still a little bit behind, and I think the culture overall is still developing. There are some real nice places to grab a to grab a beer, but um, I think overall they're not super developed. When I think, especially in this region, the way Asheville is, which is not a large town, or Charleston, which is not a large town, or Charlotte, which is a major city, but even them, even they have a a good beer scene, of course. Or the the upstate of South Carolina has a a good number of things going on. So I think, but the point is even in Columbia, you don't have to go to a Buffalo wild wings to, they're not going to be your flagship for finding great beer. It's, um, it's easy to find it in many, many other places quite easily. So, uh, that was the gist of the article. It's on poorly reviewed beer.com. And so I invite you to check it out. I wrote it yesterday. So if you're watching this video on PRB.com, uh, it should be directly below this video. Uh, just go on the blog page and you can find it there otherwise. Um, also, check out PRB on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Untapped. You can find links and usernames for all those in the description below. And also, feel free, to, feel free to like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around at Poorly Reviewed Beer.